Hey guys, today is uh, September 11th, 2013, and as you can see, right and left, I got my Dutch bucket tomatoes going again, and looking to take these all the way up until about Christmas. Hopefully, uh, I may have to come in here and top them or something like that, so the last ones to go ahead and produce. I would like to shut this whole thing down for the month of January when it's so cold, and give me just a little bit of break. But a couple of different things on these right here. This is the side that last year, my last crop, I did put these uh, yo-yo type things on, where you got a spool up at the top and then you can drop the plants down. And this side over here, the ones in the center, they're gonna just have a straight string like I generally do, I've always done, and just let them grow straight up. I'm not interested in trying to drop them down. I still got, you know, another eight foot or something up there for them to grow, eight or nine. That ought to be enough between now and Christmas to get plenty of tomatoes off of here. I've talked in the past about the importance of keeping sunlight out of your reservoir, your buckets, or whatever kind of hydroponic setup you have, it's very important to keep the inside of that bucket or your water, keep it dark so you don't get algae growth in there. My first uh, couple of times using this setup, I didn't have any uh, black plastic on here. And it, when I finished up, I had to go back and clean the inside of those buckets and scrub that green stuff out of the bottom. It didn't seem to affect the plants, but it's affected me having to clean that stuff. So last year I went back and uh, put the plastic on the outside here and it made a huge difference when it came time to clean this stuff up. Here's a good tip for you. When it comes time to uh, clean your tomatoes up, after you've picked all your tomatoes off and you decide you want to you know, clean this stuff out of here, don't go in and cut the bottom of the stem while these things are still green. Shut the water supply off and make that plant consume every bit of moisture that's inside that bucket and then go ahead and start to die and dry out. Then you come in and cut your stem It'll make it a lot easier separating the roots from your perlite or hydrogen, whatever kind of media you happen to have in there. It makes cleaning the strainers out really easy. I just take them, put them in a tub of water with some uh, dishwashing liquid and a little bit of that Clorox cleanup stuff. Get them soaked real good and spray them out and everything, dry them out and they're good to go again. I get asked very often, where do I get the perlite from? I buy the perlite in these like four cubic foot bags. It's actually about a 20 pound bag. The stuff is really lightweight. I can get it for $18 at the local feed store. If you had to go to one of them big box stores and buy them little bitty bags or something like that, uh, please don't do it. You're not going to be able to afford to grow tomatoes. You need to find something else to be able to use as your grow media. Some type of rock, stone, or you know something like that. How many buckets can I fill up with one bag right here? I was able to get seven this time. I didn't fill these buckets up all the way because I really don't need to. They're so tall and everything. They'd actually be better if they were about six inches shorter. So I didn't fill the buckets up this year. And I got right at seven buckets out of each bag. In regard to how far apart to put the plants, I think that's kind of a personal preference, how close you want to put them, uh, with the exception of one thing, light penetration. And this side over here, this is my north wall. So I'm not going to have anything behind this. I've got the buckets pretty close here, you know, as close as I could get them. I think about 18 inches or something like that. Everything will be a single stem. Just keep it going straight up and then turn it if I have to by dropping it down. This side that's in the middle, I skipped every other slot. So these are twice as far apart as these. And the reason was the sun is going to be over here shining through these plants. I did not want a solid wall of plants right here blocking all the sunlight over here. So Take that into consideration when you're growing inside of a greenhouse. Look at where you're putting your tall plants versus your short plants or whatever and what's behind the ones that are in the front. Put your uh, shorter plants in the front, tall plants in the back, or at least make sure you've got some gaps in here to let the sunlight through. Something you may have noticed, I don't have lids on these buckets anymore. I did a few of them last year without the lids, where I actually took the lids off to see how they did and they had a little bit of algae would grow up on top but not a whole lot at all what happens i take this piece of pvc about a six inch piece and i stick it on down in there and then take my tubing put it inside there make sure it stays and what this does it releases the fluid you know a few inches below the surface of the perlite which keeps the top of it from, uh, staying so wet and algae is not going to grow in a dry area it just ain't going to happen so if you don't want to use lids you don't have to have a couple more things in here going on. These are some white eggplant. They're just sitting in a five gallon bucket using uh, what Mr. Cracky had talked about. And I've got them in these six inch net pots, put hydrogen in there and then I have my rock wool cube on the inside. And they're off to a very good start. 
Right here I have a Padron Pepper, P-A-D-R-O-N. Just getting the roots down into the water now. Off to a pretty good start. And this is a purple jalapeno, just for fun. I like the color purple. So that's my Dutch bucket tomatoes for this year. I got 16 over here in the original setup and uh, 18 in the, the last one that I made last year. And these are all big beef. Y'all seen me grow this thing three, four, five times now already. And it's extremely productive hybrid tomato. Uh, excellent for slicing and putting on a sandwich and also makes pretty good juice too. So um, it's one that I've had a lot of success with. And like in most people in garden, they find something that works, you stick with it. Well, I'm sticking with big beef. This is what the pak choy looked like on August 28th when I took this picture. And two weeks later, this is what I got. There's some really big stuff here now. It grows pretty fast in a hydroponic setup. You take these things out. All them nice, long, clean, white roots down in there. That's a pretty looking plant. Same deal with the cabbage on August 28th. And then today, September 11th, pretty big difference for two weeks. Just sitting here, this is uh, doing that cracky deal. No aeration up under this at all. The only problem I have with these things right now is the daggone uh, moss and everything. Keep coming in here, laying eggs on them, and I got worms left and right. You see all the worm holes in there, but I hit them with another dose of BT and uh, try to keep knocking them back. They'll keep coming as long as it's warm outside. The Adriana lettuce on August 28th. And the Adriana lettuce today, September 11th. You can see the size of these heads, and they are not quite as tight as what I usually have. It's a combination of two things. I got this 40% shade cloth on here, so we're cutting out some of the sunlight. And also, it's been very warm in here, so they're not going to have as uh, tight a head to them. The Red Cross on August 28th, and the Red Cross today. Just like the Adriana, great big old leaves on here. Really good looking lettuce. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this uh, probably tomorrow, cut a whole bunch of it out and just go take it to some people. The romaine lettuce right here is the best I've ever grown. I've tried to grow it a couple of times and it just didn't quite come out right. This stuff right here is just absolutely beautiful. No defects in the leaves, nowhere, none at all. Ready to just cut this thing off and uh, rinse the dust off of it. Go put it on a sandwich or do whatever with it. And this is one of my new favorites right here, the tatsoi. It's an Asian green. You can eat it fresh in a salad or you could cook it up either one. And these things are very prolific. You can pick off four or five leaves at a time if you want to and the thing will just keep on growing uh, provided you don't have hot weather and it bolts. And all of this stuff is just so easy to grow. And to wrap this one up, the IBC right here that has the pak choy in it is a true floating raft setup. I've got an air pump, air stones up under there, aerating the water. And those things just uh, kicking butt right now. The cabbage right here, going back to what uh, Mr. Cracky had talked about, B.A. Cracky. If you don't understand that, I did post a video last year explaining everything, how to make this work. Uh, I'll put a link probably over here and uh, down in the description box. So you can just Google B.A. Cracky and read up on what he was talking about. But it's a really cool way to grow. And it is so easy. I'm not kidding. It's the easiest way you'll ever find to grow lettuce or any kind of leafy green. The Adriana lettuce right here, the Red Cross, this romaine, the tatsoi, all of this was grown using Mr. Cracky's method. And once you put your seedlings into the box, I wrote down a list of everything you need to do to those plants to get them from uh, this big to this big. I wrote it all down on this piece of paper right here. Y'all want to see what you got to do? Nothing. You have to do absolutely nothing. Other than maybe spray for some uh, bugs or something like that if you got moss and uh, butterflies and everything coming in trying to lay eggs all over it. But this is, I call it set it and forget it. Honestly, folks, you will never find an easier way to grow lettuce, especially from a hydroponic standpoint. You put it in there, you walk away and you come back in, you know, 30 days, something like that, and you start cutting your lettuce. It's a piece of cake. Anybody could do this. As I said before, there is no one absolute perfect way to garden uh, there's just too many variables out there but if you're having problems growing any kind of leafy green give hydroponics a try look at what mr cracky was talking about i don't think you'd be disappointed so i hope that was helpful y'all take care and lord willing i'll see you next time if you found this video to be helpful informative entertaining or just downright funny 
don't forget to subscribe.